It looks like this bantamweight division star's here to stay. From contract extensions to his history in the octagon, let's talk about how Sean O'Malley's excited about his eight-fight contract deal. Starting with the eight-fight contract extension O'Malley signed with the company. And it looks like O'Malley's pretty excited about the new deal. You can see it by how he even talked about it on his podcast. He called it a very gracious contract that he's proud of. You might be thinking, isn't that too less? But Sean doesn't feel the same way he's pretty happy with the number he's gotten love doing that to anybody in the division and that's what's so exciting is because i have the skills i have the abilities and now i have the opportunity to go out he added that he doesn't think any of his managers could have gotten him the deal he managed to land and that it was good for his relationship with the ufc not just that though he's got nothing to say about the money he's getting paid either sean insists it's the perfect amount wow even if o'malley can get three fights a year he could still be with the ufc for more than three years if he didn't want to leave. But based on how we talked about the contract afterward, the Sugar Show might make so much money that staying put will never be a problem. Wait, so what does this contract mean for his future in the UFC? Well, there might be changes to O'Malley's bantamweight title. Sugar! In the bantamweight division, O'Malley's the top challenger. In October, he won a split decision over Piotr Yan. This made it five fights in a row that he hadn't lost and put him in a good position for a title fight. Oh, that's big. That's big for Piotr Yan. Piotr Yan has got some very timely takedowns. It's unclear who that champion is. I've heard Aljamain Sterling, the current champion, will likely fight Henry Cejudo at UFC 287 on April 8th. But Sterling also said that he might leave the bantamweight division after Cejudo. That's where Sean comes in. Sterling also said he doesn't think anyone's left to fight in the bantamweight division after beating Henry Cejudo. But apparently, he won't mind a money fight with Sean Malley if Sterling stays healthy on the sidelines. No matter what O'Malley does in the near future, the 28-year-old has become a big name in the bantamweight division. Signing him to a new deal with more fights was a smart business move for the promotion. But before he made it to the big leagues, he had quite a journey through the MMA world. That, that Mexican oh. fighting spirit, man. He's, he's a fighter. He's willing to get in there with Sean O'Malley and try to go in the fight. Sean O'Malley's MMA career was pretty good too. O'Malley started his MMA career as an amateur fighter, competing in local fights in Montana. And let me tell you, he was pretty good. He went 5-0 as an amateur, winning all his fights by knockout or submission. After his successful amateur career, O'Malley turned pro in 2015. He started fighting for a promotion called Intense Championship Fighting, where he continued dominating his opponents. He went on a five-fight winning streak, winning all his his fights by knockout or submission. After he hurt his ankle while sparring at the MMA lab, he couldn't train MMA anymore. The UFC bantamweight said on his own YouTube channel that he trained in boxing instead of sitting around doing nothing. He went to a nearby boxing gym called Hammer Boxing. That's where he heavily wrapped his foot and put on boxing shoes to keep it from getting hurt more. Only two months passed before O'Malley got a boxing match. Sean won the only fight he ever had as a professional boxer. He might not be at his peak now, but Sean was a pretty good fighter for his time. Now short up and cut that goal, covers up. That's it. Sugar That's shot. It. It After all, he made his UFC debut in 2017. It went down on Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. He won that fight with a knockout in the first round. He then had his official UFC debut in December of the same year and won that fight by decision. Talk about having beginner's luck. In his next fight, O'Malley suffered a serious foot injury, but he still managed to win against Andre Secumdith in March 2018. Unfortunately, in August 2020, he suffered his first first loss in the UFC against Marlon Vera due to a leg injury. This made everyone question whether he could handle the pressure in the octagon. Things took a pretty dark turn later though. It got worse when O'Malley was set to fight Jose Alberto Quinones at UFC 229 in 2018. Until they step into the octagon and then it's too late. Right there. Spinning back kick to the body. 
In September of that year, O'Malley said he wasn't going to fight because he might have broken the anti-doping policy. Yep, the good old performance-enhancing drug use problem. O'Malley had hip surgery on October 25th while he was waiting for a decision on his possible violation. After that, the NSAC suspended O'Malley for six months because he had Osterine in his system. So oh, I love that trick. He did this against Alphamay and Sterling many times. A little back trick. As of March 2019, he was able to go back. O'Malley was set to fight Marlon Vera at UFC 239 in 2019, but in June, he said he wouldn't fight because he failed a drug test for Osterine. Due to the failed test, the Nevada State Athletic Commission decided to suspend him and USADA also suspended him for six months. The Osterine in his system was probably left over from a test he had already failed before UFC 229. That still doesn't tell you much about his fighting style, but the man is known for his lightning fast strikes, unorthodox techniques, and relentless aggression. But it's not just his skills that make him stand out, it's his personality. O'Malley is a true showman who knows how to entertain a crowd. He's got charisma, confidence, and a wicked sense of humor. And let's not forget about his signature walkout. Whether he's coming out to a classic rock anthem or a hip-hop banger, O'Malley always puts on a show. But don't let his fun-loving persona fool you. When it comes to fighting, Sugar Sean is all all business. He's proven time and time again that he's a true contender in the bantamweight division. So if you're not already a fan of the 28-year-old, it's time to start paying attention. With his flashy style, impressive record, and larger-than-life personality, he's quickly become one of the most exciting fighters in the UFC. Though, some fights stick out in my mind when I think of Sean. The two of his best fights are from 2020 and 2021. One of the fights that really showcased O'Malley's style was his bout against Eddie Wineland in June 2020. Right from the start, O'Malley was throwing all sorts of crazy kicks and punches. He even landed a beautiful spinning back kick to Wineland's face that had everyone on their feet. And when he wasn't throwing flashy techniques, he used his footwork and movement to avoid Wineland's strikes and stay out of danger. In the end, O'Malley knocked out Wineland in the first round with a brutal punch that left him flat. Another fight that really demonstrated O'Malley's style was when he went against Thomas Almeida in March 2021. In that fight, the superstar constantly switched stances and used feints to keep Almeida guessing. And when he did throw strikes, they were fast and accurate with a lot of power behind them. O'Malley even had fun taunting Almeida during the fight, sticking his tongue out and smiling at him after landing some big shots. And in the end, O'Malley finished Almeida with a beautiful right hand that sent him crashing to the canvas. It looks like Dana's got a lot of faith in his cash cow, even after the whole judge controversy. Anyway, Dana's sure Sean's striking ability and knockout skills could make him as famous as Conor McGregor. Now that's a big prediction to make. That's all on how Sean O'Malley's excited about the eight-figure contract deal he received. See you in the next one!